Michelle Davenport. Welcome to the Vertica Hope Show. I am with Amy Mitchell today, and boy, does she have a story to share with you, her testimony of Vertica Hope. She is the founder and CEO of Anchor Her Ministries, and she is going to tell us maybe a little bit about your ministry today and some of her testimonies. So you stay tuned because she's fixing to share. Hi, Amy. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. So uh, can you share a little bit about Anchor Her Ministries? Sure. At Anchor Her, we embrace Empower and Ignite, women impacted by incarceration, domestic violence, and addiction. Mm -hmm. The blueprint for the ministry came out of my own personal testimony, yes. and we are just seeing so much change and transformation in Kansas City. Woo, in Kansas City. I'm glad we got this girl. <laughs> uh, can you share um, some of your testimony with the listeners today? Sure. At the age of 19, I was on government assistance, pregnant, and expecting my first child, and I didn't have a lot of resources, I didn't have a lot of hope at the time, right. and I just didn't have God, to be right. honest. Right. And I was doing some things that weren't good, and I got in jail, I got sent to jail one night, and that was right after I had my daughter. And I just remember, like, what was I doing, thinking, like, why did I get here, and how did I get here? Yeah. But um, I knew that I wanted my daughter, I wanted to be a better mother, but they were having all these bonds on me and I didn't know if I'd even get out of jail. But I remember getting down in my cell that night and I was like, God, I will do anything if you just get wow. me out of here. And um, the next day, all the bonds dropped on me. They gave me a court date. I got to get my daughter two hours before she was taken out of my custody. And I was just so ecstatic. I was like, I can't even believe how good God was, you know. In the middle of your pit. In the middle of my pit. Mm. I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve those bonds to drop. Mm -hmm. I didn't deserve to get my daughter. Mm. But I just remember grabbing her. I ran to a payphone, so that'll age me. And I called a friend. <laughs> that's funny. I just got to pause for a laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm yeah. I know payphone, so that'll age me too. Yes. Yeah. So I went to a payphone, called a ride, and then I was kind of back on my own again yeah and then of course when you're back on your own and you don't have a lot of resources you end up kind of doing the same things over and over trying yeah. to get a different result right but um that'll go into my story more after that but wow. yeah well that's incredible and it's it i what i loved about that is, and what is a teaching moment about that is that you were in the jail you prayed, you got on your knees, you said, I will do anything. And I don't know how many times, I mean, you, if you won't be honest, I will. <laughs> because I don't know how many times I've gotten on my hands and knees before God and said, I'll do anything, mm -hmm. anything, if you'll just get me out of this situation. And then he gets me out and then I have amnesia. Like, I forget Literally. that he did that for me. And I end up going back to the same old thing. Do I don't know if that's your story because it is. <laughs> I don't. I read a little bit about them, but I don't like to dive deep because yeah. I like to learn while you're learning about them. But anyway, I just found that as a teaching moment that when you pray to God and you ask Him to help you, that you need to. I call them uh, faith builders. So when you're in your life and He's done something miraculous like that, I mean. All the bonds were dropped. Now, anybody that knows anything, I used to work for Grandview Courthouse. Anybody that knows anything about anything <laughs> knows bonds, you know, bonds just don't drop off like flies, you know. They don't just drop off. And then right before, two hours before, she was going to lose her daughter to the state, I'm assuming. Um, it was going to be to a family member to out of town. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but still hard to get. Once that, once that process starts, that's hard to yeah. undo that process. It's a lot of paperwork and time, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. But God stepped in for her and then... What'd you say? You got back out and then life started happening, things started happening, and it where did. we go. And even in my folly, God protected me. I got yeah. probation instead of prison. Amen. And then um, I got injured in a domestic violence situation mm -hmm. and I was taken to safe home. Oh, Lord. And that is literally when things started changing for me because I had a lady come alongside me, a volunteer there. Yeah. And she told me her story of hope which inspired me and I was like, I want all those things. I want to have a good house and I want to have a good job and I want to do these things with my daughter. I just don't know how. Amen. And so she's like, let me tell you. And she told me what happened to her and she gave me hope. And she's like, 
but you gotta just take it one step at a time. Amen. And I think sometimes we just think that we have to do everything at once, but she was showing me, go downstairs and get those clothes out of the shelter, you know? Right. Dress good, dress for success, go get Amen. that Amen, I believe in that. <laughs> I, believe, I do, I do. We yeah. have we have put on events for battle women's shelters where we had clothes and makeup and purses and all the things just to help women because I do believe that. I believe mm -hmm. that you dress for what you want to become, what you want to be and what you want to see happen in your life. So I think that that was great advice for that worker that it, helped you volunteer. It was because not only did I go and I got a job for minimum wage, which was 5.25 an hour at that time. Yeah, there's an age <laughs> thing popping up again. <laughs> right, there's that age thing. But then as I'm dressing in those clothes in the shelters, and that's why I like when people really like donate the, their best, you know, they don't just donate anything. Let me pause right there. Uh, that's a bone. That's a mm -hmm. thing. That's a thing I have. Mm -hmm. Listen, don't be given to the shelters stuff that are stained, wore out, tore up, you know, that you, that you would throw in the trash. Mm -hmm. You give them, when I go through my closet, I give some of my best stuff. And if I, if I look through it and it has a rip or a tear and I can't mend it, if it has a stain, then no, I do not give it to the shelter. So do not just give out the worst mm -hmm. things. Give out the best for these women because this woman, she wanted to go through some great clothes, not some stained up, ripped clothes mm -hmm. from the 1970s. Right, and just doing that, like giving your best yes, I got to choose my best yes, and then next thing you know, I'm the administrative assistant at that job, making three more dollars an hour, and just being able to provide more for my kids, because I had two kids at the time wow. now. Wow, And um, just every step, like she was walking it out with me, and she didn't just say, it. you need to do this and here's your list, she walked the steps out with me and Important. she cared. She showed love, you know. Amen. And then um, when I went from the shelter, this is why I always say don't quit and transition. I went from the shelter, which nobody likes to be with a bunch of women in a shelter. You get catty and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. But uncomfortable can be the big best thing for us, you know, yeah, being be. uncomfortable. So I went to the transitional living center. And then after that, I got my own apartment and I was just happy to be on pallets. But here comes this volunteer with her community resources behind her and just decked out my whole house. That we is all amazing. Stuff. That's amazing. I'm yeah. praying and trying. Matter of fact, I just called two uh, domestic violence shelters yesterday to try to start partnering with them and helping them. And I want to have them on the show and let, yeah. uh, and, and, and just um, educate teenagers, young girls, adult women, what domestic violence looks like and how to tell if you're in one, you know, I just believe there's a need for it out there. So I'm so happy that part of your story, I mean, I'm not happy you had to go through that, yeah. but some of your vertical hope is because you did have to go through that transition. Yeah, and I don't think that God caused the domestic violence, no. but as it came out, like he worked it all for my good, you know, Amen. he worked Amen. everything for my good at that time. And then even around Christmas time, it was just a cool story that I want to share. Please. I didn't have tree ornaments and things. And here comes this volunteer lady again. She got a tree. We had these ornaments with cute little tassels, the same kind she was getting her family, oh which gosh. made me feel so good. Absolutely. And then here comes all these presents boy girl boy girl boy girl it was like santa exploded under that tree god was just being so gracious <laughs> santa exploded, santa exploded <laughs> under the tree. Like, well that would have been a sight that would have been a sight right <laughs> but there was just so many gifts and the cool thing is is god is just so good and abundant that there was a single dad upstairs um the mother was in jail oh, and they didn't have gifts for christmas so we were literally able to take half those gifts upstairs and they had Christmas too. It was like loaves and fishes. God just provided. Come on, y'all. <laughs> now, see, that's what you do when you're overly blessed yeah. is you look for a way to be a blessing to someone else. I love that, Amy. Mm -hmm. I love that story. Thank you. Wow. Wow. So you got into your apartment and this lady came alongside you from the shelter and you've gotten a better job now and you're living there. Did How did your life go from there? Yeah. So even during that time, like she had been asking me, like, what do you want more than anything? Yeah. And I was like, well, I want a house for my kids to grow up in, like with yeah. good neighborhoods, good schools. And so that was my vision. And we know without a vision, the people perish. That's right. So that was the vision. That's what I was aiming for. And in the year 2000, I was able to buy my first home. And so we're in those good schools and everything. Yeah. yeah. 2004? 2000. 2000. My mm -hmm. gosh, girl, you've been living this life for a good time. Yes. Wow. God is faithful. He is faithful. And so that was so cool. And I remember in that jail cell, and I, I was like almost like trying to cut a deal with God at yeah. that time. And 
I may have left him for that time, but then he came back around and I get this promise, right? The house, right. I'm sitting in there and there's a door hanger on my door to a local church. And I called them, they came out, I dedicated my life to Christ. Then I'm, we're going to At church. this house? At this house, this at the is promise. such a God story. This is such vertical hope. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, I love it. It was just, it was amazing. And I just sat there that night and I just remember feeling like, I can't believe this is my house. This is such a beautiful, like God's promise and coming true. And, but God is so funny, like how he, I say he calls in a chip, right? Yeah. He's like, remember when you said that you yeah. would do anything? Yeah. That's when he came around my life and started, even through all the tragedy, through the trauma and stuff, he literally brought that hope and he brought anchor her and literally my life ended up being the blueprint that he was making for Anchor Her to help other women find freedom. Wow, wow. How many women do you think you've helped so far? Hundreds. Hundreds of women. Hundreds of women. Hundreds of women. Um, what are some of the practical ways people can help family members struggling with addictions? Because this is your ministry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Incarceration, domestic violence, and addiction. And honestly, most of the women, I would say 85% of our women struggle with all three. Yeah. And so the addiction piece, like when you're having a family member that's in addiction, um, is definitely, we got to plug into the main source and we have an event coming up called recharge KC. Mm. And the way I look at recharge is we can have a cell phone that is not connected to AT and T or whatever, whatever yeah. service provider. And we may be able to use Wi-Fi or whatever, but we don't really, we're not really plugged in, but right. it's just like us being plugged into God. Like he's the power, he's the source. And when we have him, Amen. we can do about anything, you know? Amen. And Amen. so that's where we need to plug in for those loved ones, for those people out there suffering in addiction is plug into God because he's the one that can bring in the real movement. And right. it may not always look like how we want it to look, right. but God is good. And just, we have a lot of community resources in Kansas City. We probably have more than most in our country. Wow. And it's just finding those. And that's another reason why we even do the Recharge KC event is so people can see the providers and providers can lock arms together to come around the city and rally around them. Yeah. How many, that's awesome. How many women do you think are living in this area that are being domestically abused and on drugs and about to go to jail? I mean, just from the traffic you've seen, just a guess. Oh, Hundreds of hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Yeah. It's Do you think, so let me ask you a question, um, because I know my mom was a heroin addict and she got beat and tortured and it was horrible mm -hmm. by the same man. Do you think that women get hooked on the drugs? Do, typically, do you see that women get hooked on the drugs first and then start taking the beatings or vice versa? Oh, I think vice versa. And I also think that women sometimes the relationships are more of the drugs than their drugs mm -hmm. and then they use the drugs to cope but mm -hmm. that's why you know we really talk to women about making healthy choices and right. when and seeing the patterns i didn't see the pattern for a long time when i was in domestic violence right and then once i did i was like wow you have that like honeymoon stage then the tension building and then bam something bad happens right right but then when you go back to the honeymoon you have that hope yeah. That everything's going to change from there. Right. But when I really learned that insanity was the same thing, doing the same thing over oh, and over, expecting different results, yes. that started to give me a mind shift. And then when I was currently in a domestic violence situation, and I don't say like it was just one sided because I had learned domestic life, you know, violence my whole life. Right. So we were both yeah. domestic, yeah. being yeah. violent towards one another. And it was horrible, you know, and it was horrible yeah. for our kids. But once learning that pattern, and then I heard a person, Sarah Jakes Roberts, she yes. was sharing her story, and my daughter and I would watch her on TV, and she just gave me so hope that I could walk away from domestic violence, that I didn't have to keep doing those same things over and over, right. and my life could change. And so I have a cool story about yes, her later. Yes, please but, share it. Please share it. Yes. Yeah, so um, my daughter and I were both so impacted by her, my daughter Mariah, and we would watch her every morning when we were doing our makeup. Yes. And I was like, baby, I'm going to take you to see Sarah Jakes Roberts. If we have to go to California, Texas, wherever she is at the time, we're going to go see her. Well, we didn't have the money at the time because we were building Anchor Her. And God is so good. He brought her to Kansas City on a Woman Evolved tour. And we had just got our 501c3 status. And literally, she was doing a contest for one 501c3, would get $1,500, get to meet Sarah Jakes and do all these things. 
well, these people sent all these cool videos and we didn't have that kind of equipment and stuff. She's standing on a chair taking a video of me and I was like, this is what we're doing in Kansas City. This is what we want to do. We want to help women. We love on women. It was very plain and simple. Yeah. But that night we won and we were on stage with her and it was just crazy. <laughs> I did read that in your thing. Yeah. I'm like, that's going to be a story. Yes. That's awesome. So um, you won that. We won it. So God just winked at you once again. Once again, and just wow. said that I'm still in this with you. And that was even more important than even, it was beautiful to be on stage with her and it was beautiful being on her show later. But the most beautiful thing was seeing God, seeing us during that time, yeah. being there with my baby that I almost lost custody of and him just showing the redemptive piece in that. Right. And then here we are in this moment, getting to share this together. It was just beautiful. That is beautiful. And just, you know, to me, your story is just about taking one step at a time yeah. just doing the next what do they say the next right thing that just is it. continually to do go down in that basement and pick out some clothes mm -hmm. some good clothes that some good women has dropped off at that place <laughs> where you could get and dress for the part and then yeah. you get a raise and then you get a new position yeah. then you get you get into a transition home then you get an apartment then you get a house then you get to be on stage yes <laughs> i mean and, and the ministry God called you to anchor her. You know, he knew, and I believe it's in um, Ephesians 2.10, he says, I, you know, I've made plans for your life and for, I've already planned good things for you to do before you were ever born. That's what it yeah. says. And he knew that about you. So even when you were on your knees in that jail, mm -hmm. God knew the heart of Amy. Mm -hmm. He knew that. He knew your heart and he knew he could do something with you. So it's not surprising. You know, in the Word of God, it says sometimes He hardens hearts or mm -hmm. the hearts are hardened and He can't get to them. But when you were in that, prison, in that jail cell, you cried out to Him. And it, even, our, even in salvation, it says in Romans uh, 10, 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, heart is the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So He looked at your heart and He said, this woman I can trust. And He had a ministry plan for you way before you ever got on your knees that night or that day whenever it was it doesn't that's matter beautiful. yeah that is beautiful how god can use you just as you're doing the next right thing and mm -hmm. and i bet that when you were down there digging through those clothes looking for something suitable that you felt good in i bet that you didn't think well you know what i'm gonna have a house and i'm gonna have a ministry called anchor her mm -mm. no you were digging in that box saying i'm gonna make a better life for myself i'm gonna start dressing for that better life. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a better job, I'm gonna get more pay, I'm mm -hmm. gonna take care of my family. And so many people think that you can go, you can skip all that. Oh yeah. And just oh. jump onto the house and onto the stage and onto the ministry. But there is a there is a process that I believe God does with us in maturing us to that. You know, you said that place can get kind of catty. Mm -hmm. Well, you're working with women now. And even mm -hmm. though, you know, you love on them, I bet some of them sometimes isn't very lovable yeah. but because you went through that transition home and you went through caddy women you know how that feels for somebody to speak and maybe even you talked caddy before mm -hmm. you know but you learn and those each thing if you look back and I'm sure you have because you're gonna write a book and mm -hmm. I want you to tell about that next um, if you look back I bet there was a lesson in every single thing that God brought you through into yeah that's literally what the book is about is oh, those lessons okay, there you go. <laughs> being led you're by the spirit over right here just being led by the spirit <laughs> you just call it right out that is exactly yeah. what it is because i just want people to know and it may not be everybody's story and it's not coming from a phd or anything yeah. but it's literally what god had shown me through all these moments in my life and how not to quit and transition because see where he will bring you and you know the baby steps my one of our girls that come through our program amanda she says baby steps lead to great success and that's so true that it, you should it's put so that true. in your book yeah, right? <laughs> you should ask amanda may i quote you on that yes um i think that's awesome because uh, number one i love that you that your story but also i love the fact that you're going to put your story into paper because other people you can't be the only one that's gone through some of that you can't right. be the only one that needs uh, direction and so what do you hope your book will do for others I just hope that it really brings in hope, that it encourages women. I see so many women, people will connect them to resources or they'll put them in a shelter, let's say an addiction treatment center, 
and then it gets uncomfortable and they want to quit. It's kind of like the butterfly yeah. story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just hold in during that hard transition to that uncomfortable thing, you're going to see something beautiful like a butterfly, you know? Yeah. But when we quit in the minute, then we go, or quit in the middle, then we go back to the same things that weren't working. Henry Cloud has a book, Never Go Back, and mm -hmm. I read that and it was very impactful to me. Yes. But it just says, like, don't go back to what wasn't working. If that wasn't working, like, let's try something new. Right, right. So, so often women do do that as just a safety net to go mm -hmm. back to even though they know it's not working and it's mm -hmm. not going to work and it's never going to work but because that's their comfortable yeah. that's their safety they go back to that and I believe they do that with abuse too they go back to the abuser because even though he's abusing you he's your safety you know either he buys you stuff or takes care of you or provides you a home I do believe in the power of grooming mm -hmm. and I believe men are out there not just men I mean we're saying men but women can be very abusive too so mm -hmm. I'm not discluding that but today we're actually talking about the women and but this applies to men but there can be a, gro a grooming process where like my mom she she um, lost a husband that was an amazing man she was married seven times and this man groomed her and he became her best friend well he you know you think he was her best friend and she thought he was a good friend but then he then it became romantic and then you know they got married and then you know everybody moved in with us you know yeah. um and then he got her on drugs and then he started beating her so for my mom it was just the opposite you know it's like my mom was all strung out and once you get strung out on drugs because i did drugs and had a issue and alcohol and all that uh what you you don't really care as long as you get your next drug fix mm -hmm. you know and she was literally a heroin addict so he could beat her anytime uh, because she because he would supply that you right. know he may beat the tar out of her but he will give her her next fix yeah. and so for my mom the grooming process wasn't the opposite it was just like that wow. friends and then lovers and then you know married and then she he was a drug dealer and she got hooked on drugs and then he beat her all the time yeah yeah I think we all are looking for a sense of community and yeah. that's why people go back to the things that weren't working because that was their community. Yeah. But we can, when we can provide something fresh, like we do with the anchor, her support groups too. Yes. Something fresh, something safe. Your voice is safe there. You're safe there. Right. It's new, fresh community. Right. Then I think that's very helpful I do too. to women and anybody. Like, I mean, why do gangs get formed? Well, it's community. I want yeah. to go to that. They gang want a because, family. Yeah. You know, how many times people say I've got my work family or I've got yeah. this family or that family. In other words, they need family. They yeah. do community, family, whatever. So the, the home or whatever they're in, the domestic, that becomes a part of their family. Yeah. You know, and yeah, your, their comfort zone. You did have a scripture at Psalms 34. 18. Do you have it memorized or? <laughs> okay, I'm going to read it. It says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Yes. Was there ever, we only have a, about five or six more minutes, but was there ever a time that, I mean, I know you felt low, you're very lowest in that jail when you got on your knees. Was there any other time that you felt like, God, if you don't pick me out of this pit, I think I might stay here? Yes, I've had um, different dips like that in my life through the incarceration, yeah. domestic violence, and then I was um, myself in addiction yeah. um, through my doctor on pain pills. Yes. And he's just shown up every time, but I think that that scripture actually just came in my life the most recently um, when I lost my son, yeah. and he passed away in August, and I just wanted to die. Yeah. And yeah. if it wasn't for my daughter Mariah just saying don't you know like I probably I don't know if I could have held on but then after I had made that decision that day that I couldn't leave that I had to stay right I just clung to the Lord and he literally was close like I've seen him close like I've never seen in my life and because I never understood how anybody could you know get through something that tragic right, right. and I never wanted to go through anything that no, tragic and no. I wish he would have never put me in anything that tragic right. but at the end of the day he has been there. He has shown up. He's not just for me, but for my family. Right. And right, even though it's right. been hard, like it's just been beautiful to see him keep his word in that part. Right. I remember, and I'm so sorry for your loss. So sorry. It, it's, I mean, I've never lost a child, but, um, and I know that's just a, a special, I mean, I have children, so I can only, I literally can only imagine that pain. I can't even really fathom them. But the only thing that could come close to it is when I lost my mother. She was my best friend. 
I mean, even though she was a heroin addict and she, there was a lot of things, um, she was a good person that made some bad choices. Mm -hmm. And, but we became best friends her last 21 years of her life. And she got out of those drugs and she married a seventh husband, which was an amazing man. And uh, she was a great meemaw to my children. And it's just a beautiful relationship. And so I remember feeling like telling the Lord, I re and see, I get emotional and it's been almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. I remember telling the Lord, I think I'm gonna die of a broken heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally thought that I'd die from a broken heart. Mm -hmm. And I, and when you said, I never felt closer to God than in that moment. Now you felt him close before, but that was like something like so close, like yeah. he didn't leave your side. Well, I was homeschooling two kids, still running Faith Builders Ministries, and just still doing the things. Mm -hmm. But I just remember God getting me up every morning to fix my kids' breakfast and to homeschool them and to be present. Yeah. And I remember one night thinking, it's a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle, because I thought I was gonna die from that pain. I thought. I don't even know if I'm going to recover from this. I literally thought my heart would stop. Yeah. I thought I my heart literally like hurt. I don't know if you're oh, yes. you felt that, but I mean, exactly I literally that. had pains in my chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're so right to say that he never left you, and you never felt closer to him because to this day I know I don't I couldn't have got through that without him. Yeah, I, that's just. You know, there might have been some other times in my life that I thought, okay, he was there, but, you know, yeah. I mustered up some strength or something. No, without a doubt, God was there. I mustered up nothing. But what the Word of God says, He says, when you're in your weakest, that's when I, your God, will come in and be mm -hmm. your strength. I will be strongest in your weakness. That's right. And I never really truly understood that scripture until I lost her. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I cannot feel any more weak. No. than I feel in this moment. Well, you shared about your book. Is there anything else you would like to share about Anchor Her? Like you had, you said you had had an event. Uh, you're fixing to have an event. You want to tell them for all the locals or even people wherever. Yeah, a couple things I'd like to say is um, in Galatians 6, 9, it says, do not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint Amen. not. Amen. That's been a thing that I've clung to. That's Amen. why in my book, like not quitting in transition, it just all goes together. I love that title. I even put yeah. that. Love this. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank and you. the event coming up, it really is just a rally for people in recovery so people can see that cover, recovery is available from addiction, yes. that they can hear stories of transformation. Yes. Um, we have a boxer coming out that's a heavyweight champion for Kansas and Missouri, John Cantrell. Oh, He's going to share his story of overcoming, and not only that, he loves the Lord, yes. and it's so evident and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, just coming out, if anybody needs recovery resources, that's what we're going to do. It's at the City House in Independence. And so we're really excited about that. And with Anchor Her, we're launching our new group. It'll be on June 3rd, and that'll be at the Way KC Church, and we're just really excited about and, it. And what does your group do? Our group is a compassionate, safe place for people to basically drop anchor while they transition. Drop anchor, anchor her. Anchor her, I right? Anchor her. Anchor. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, just to be supported in transition so they don't quit. So they have a r women cheering them on, helping them with the next best step, just like that lady did for me. Wow, you are paying it forward for sure, just a whole right. 360 turnaround for your whole life. And I believe God, number one, gets all the credit for that, but that lady using that God using that lady to just make such an impact that you that you were so impacted now you want to go impact. I yes. just that is true, true, true um, faith and tenacity right there, and just believing in God and doing what God calls you to do. And so you started a whole ministry, and like I said in the beginning, I don't think you knew that when you were digging through a mm -hmm. box of clothes <laughs> or going that. through the rack that you were going to have a a home that you were going to live in and raise your child and um, God be so faithful to you in your ministry. Well, I wish you the best in your ministry. I hope to have you back on. This has been the Vertical Hope Show. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, God bless you.